Hello and welcome to the AMTS video manual for AMTS cattle and AMTS small ruminant nutritional software. In this multiple part video series, we are covering the essentials of setting up a farm in AMTS.cattle. In this video, we are going to be focusing on the cattle screen. We have been working through the program chronologically, left to right. Previous videos focused on the farm screen, general setup, and barns and lots. So, with the barns and lot screen finished, we can close this and go to the cattle screen. The first time you open a cattle screen, it will have a dialog box prompt to enter a new cattle group. In this case, we're just going to make a generic lactating group. We will call this milking cows. We are first going to create a group of mixed lactation cows. This will be first, second, third plus lactation cows in all stages of milk. This would be very similar to what we would have for a single lactating TMR or a single lactating group type system. Now, once we create this single group, you can break this down into other groups so that you can see how your diet actually models in a first lactation animal, a second lactation animal, etc. Now, I will go through the important inputs on this screen. In the top part of the screen, we are establishing the demographics of the cow. We want to make sure that we are representing an animal that is either average for the group or perhaps a little bit better than average, depending on what your formulation strategy is. For this simulation, I will walk through the default outputs. The most important things to enter correctly are the age, days since calving, calving interval, and age at first calving. These inputs should all make sense together. So if you're trying to characterize a second lactation animal, let's say three months or four months into lactation, you probably won't have a days in milk of 300. You also would probably not have that animal characterized as a 60 month old animal. In creating a new group and using the default animal of a lactating dairy cow, we have a 41 month old animal 120 days into her lactation, and she is in her second lactation, given a 13-month calving interval and age of first calving at 24 months. If we wanted to change this number, we would need to do some basic calculations for the rest of the values. We would enter average age at first calving, then add the calving interval. That gets us into our second lactation, a value shown here in red, meaning it is calculated by the program. Then we can choose how many months into that second lactation we would like to describe. In this case, we're talking about 120 days since calving. So we simply add four months to our combination of age at first calving and calving interval, and that gets us to 41 months. Each time you set up a cattle group, I encourage you to do that exercise where you walk through and say, I'd like to describe a second lactation animal or a third lactation animal at a certain stage in lactation, and that will help inform you as to what the best inputs are. You want to be accurate in your inputs for days pregnant and days since calving, as these inputs are second in importance to age in determining requirements. Those numbers, in addition to milk production, are the most critical in this top part of the screen when characterizing a group. There are a couple of key inputs that are considered trigger points that you'll want to be aware of. They have a specific role during certain times of the animal cycle and will determine what equations are applied in the model. One of them is days pregnant. In this case, since we're talking about an early to mid lactation animal, we know that this animal is only about 20 days pregnant. The requirement for energy and protein are probably fairly minimal, so at this point days pregnant is not a very important input. However, when we talk about a late lactation pregnant animal or an animal that's going to be calving in fairly soon, we want to make sure that we have this days pregnant set correctly. There are two key numbers in this entry that we want to pay attention to. One is 191 days pregnant. This is when the ME and MP requirements start to pick up quite a bit for pregnant animals. The other 
is once the animal is 260 days pregnant, there's another large jump in ME and MP requirements as calculated by the model. The other entry that you want to pay attention to is days in milk. This is especially important for fresh cows. If you are trying to characterize a fresh cow group and you are talking about animals that are less than 21 days in milk, there's actually a fairly large calculated requirement for mammogenesis and lactogenesis. During that time, typically also the dry matter intake prediction equations tend to perform better on animals that are beyond 21 days in milk. This is mostly because we actually lack a lot of information for building robust models for animals below 21 days in milk. We all know that the dry matter intake around the transition period is very important. It's also very variable with different animals and different production systems. To finish out the top section of the cattle screen, another very important group of numbers is the milk production information. If you have individual milk production with milk fat and protein, always try to use that to build your cattle group. If you're dealing with milk bulk tank average, that may be the only information you have from the farm, then you'll probably want to enter something fairly close to the actual production. This milk production, milk fat, and protein are the most important aspects for getting lactation requirements calculated. These have a large influence on the total ME and MP requirement. Making sure to get this input correct is important. Now we will focus on the bottom half of the cattle screen. The first ones to look at here are body condition score. Typically, for most groups of animals, you will probably want to have the current and target body condition score set to the same number. This is telling the model that the animals aren't really putting on too much condition or taking off much condition. It represents the average of that group. When we start to talk about animals that are in early lactation, or sometimes animals that are in late lactation, we may occasionally want to change these inputs to reflect body condition score being put on or taken off. This is the only way to tell the model that some reserve changes are happening. If we want to make sure that we have the correct predictions for a fresh cow, we probably need to credit the animal with a little bit of body condition score mobilization probably somewhere between a quarter of a condition score and at most up to one and a quarter condition score change, depending on the farm that you're working with. Typically, you'll want to have this happen over the first 30 to 60 or even 100 days in milk. The next part of the cattle screen that is very important is going to be the body weights. These four inputs, how to compute gain, mean full body weight, mature full body weight, and average daily gain are very important for determining many of the requirement e equations in the program. In fact, the mean and mature full body weight, these two numbers here, could be considered the most important animal inputs in the model. Again, this is the most important input in the model to be able to calculate all sorts of requirements, including maintenance requirements, including growth requirements. This is a very important thing to get right. It is oftentimes a very difficult thing to get on farms, but if you really want to refine your ability to use this model to predict performance, trying to understand that body weight will be very important is what you need to do. With that said, what we have to recognize is that we have two distinct body weights that we want to be talking about. One of them is the current or mean full body weight at this time. This is the mean body weight of the group you're trying to model. The second is the mature full body weight. This is the body weight of animals in their third to third plus lactation. These animals would be considered mature animals and it's important to note that unless you have distinctly different groups on a farm, all of the mature Full body weight should be the same for all groups, whether they're a first calf heifer or a mature cow. Ultimately, they're going to, one hopes, if they're in that farm long enough, reach that final mature full body weight. 
What this does is help us understand how big of an animal these animals are going to be when full grown. It's important to determine requirements for gain because we know when an animal is near the end of their growth curve, they typically are putting on more fat than protein than when they're in the early part of their growth curve. Like, like with a calf, we know there's a lot more lean tissue growth occurring than fat accretion. Getting these inputs right is very important to help us understand the requirements for gain. Another input here is how to compute gain. There are a couple different ways in the program to compute average daily gain. The simplest way is to use an inputted average daily gain weight that you directly enter. The other ways to do this is by using a target shrunk weight gain system. This system is based on using the target growth system as described by Cornell and Dr. Michael Van Amberg. This means we're trying to hit certain benchmarks at different ages and different stages of life. Those benchmarks are usually somewhere around two times the birth weight by weaning, 55% of the mature full body weight by breeding time, 80 to 85% of mature body weight by first calving, and by second calving, 90 to 95% of mature full body weight. If you want to look at more of this system, we encourage you to contact us or to try to learn more about the target growth system. It can be a very robust way to be able to predict the average daily gain is to be trying to meet those targets that are set forth by the target growth system. To assist you in calculating the average daily gain, you can also use the average daily gain calculator located in the ribbon bar. To use this, select the desired cattle group from the drop down. The value here is generated based on the information you have entered in the upper part of the cattle screen for the selected group. This chart will give you a feel as to whether your inputs have been reasonable. Use the toggle buttons to move inputs up or down or key in directly. As you make adjustments, you can see the average daily gain number here be recalculated. As with several auto calculations in the program, this value is mathematically generated. If the value is nonsensical, check your inputs. When we are troubleshooting a program sent to us by a customer, we will sometimes see outlandish gain requirements. We first look at the age of the group. It is not unusual for us to find users have entered an animal age of 60 months and a mean full body weight of 50 or 100 units below mature full body weight. That animal is considered mature and the average daily gain to reach target mature weight will be unattainable. Another important bit related to body weight is the true-false scale weight. True-false scale weight means, did I actually weigh the animal or am I using an estimation from let's say a tape weight or even just my guest weight by looking at them? In this case, with a scale weight set to true, as it is by default, this would be saying we do actually weigh the cows. If you set the scale weight to false, this would indicate these animals are just an estimated body weight. I encourage you to set this scale weight to false for most of the animal groups you're working with, unless you actually have true body weights. This becomes quite important when we're talking about animals that are in their late gestation, especially in the last trimester. When you have a scale weight set to true, the program will assume that you are weighing the animal and that it includes the weight of conceptus, which is calculated se separately from the requirement standpoint. If you set this to false, the program will not subtract out the weight of conceptus from the estimated body weights. So the recommendation is to leave it to false because Unfortunately, it's very rare that we actually have body weights, especially for animals in late gestation. We have some excellent discussion from a nutritionist webinar by Sam Fezenden in 2019. The links are added to the description section of this video. You can click on the video thumbnail here if you want to watch that excellent webinar. There are a couple other areas of input that are fairly self-explanatory. 
such as breed type, breeding system, primary breed, and also things like coat condition and hair depth. This is all related to the requirements. If you have animals that are in a situation where they may be covered with mud or they don't really have a dry place to lie down, you would want to put mud on the legs or heavily covered to increase the requirements that those animals have for maintenance. I also want to draw your attention to this dropdown for IOFC calculation. This refers to the milk production value that income over feed costs is calculated on in the recipe screen outputs. By default, the program will use the first limiting ME or MP predicted milk production. Those values may not reflect the true herd production, especially if you do not have the inputs correct relative the, to the actual farm conditions, animal demographics, or feed analysis values. If you want to see what the IOFC is for the actual milk production, you select that from the dropdown. In doing so, another group of inputs will be shown that are meant to reflect the actual milk production and milk components. Keep in mind, when you are in the recipe screen, the predicted outputs are reflective of the modeled results derived from your inputs, not from your input in the actual milk production. Reviewing the essential inputs, those being getting the demographics of these animals set correctly in terms of age, days pregnant, and days since calving, calving interval, and age at first calving, entering in milk production information, body condition score, especially for fresh cows, and the body weight information. Those are the essential areas that you'll want to focus on in this screen. Remember, as was stated in previous tutorials, the most important information in each screen will be highlighted in bold. That wraps up the information for essential inputs on the cattle screen. This is enough to get you started on tailoring group information to match that of the animals located on the farm you are trying to model. Yes, there are default values, but the true power of the program comes in the capability to feed with precision and that relies on robust and accurate inputs. In a follow-up video, we will demonstrate setting up to model animals at differing stages in their life, far-off and close-up dry cows, bred heifers, post- and pre-weaned heifers. I will also demonstrate some of the other controls on the ribbon bar. Look for more program use tutorials and formulation tips on our AMTS website. We have blogs and videos illustrating program use. We value your thoughtful feedback and suggestions for additional video tutorials. The next in this series will be on the feed screen. You can find information at agmodelsystems.com or reach out to us through support at agmodelsystems.com.